Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us via Ops events and via live. Uh, welcome to our free virtual education summit. The summit theme is Google for Creativity. Firstly, uh, we are wishing you a Happy New Year 2021. Lot of health, success in your professional and personal life. Uh, we have a great team here today. As you can see, it's going to be Women's Day. <laughs> so, uh, hi, Dina. Hi, Jane. And also, Dan. Uh, Dennis, uh, uh, Dennis, our CEO, I mean, CEO of Upsevens. Uh, so just a bit of overview. I am based in the Czech Republic. Uh, Dan is based uh, in Prague as well. Uh, Lina is uh, based in Qatar. And uh, Jane is based in Philippines. Uh, so I would like to get the presentation on. So before we start, so uh, I would like to really say huge thanks to uh, our partner, uh, Acer. Uh, really, thanks so much because uh, uh, this cooperation is great and we are uh, able to run these events for free. Uh, so, uh, and we are really a huge uh, Chromebook fans, users, and we really recommend them. So on the screen, you can see uh, the link. Uh, feel free to submit uh, this survey and you have a chance to win a free seat for our upcoming events. Also, feel free to join our uh, social media, Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. Uh, Dan, uh, would you like to tell a bit more about the ISTE certification or the options? Yeah, so thanks, Veronica. Just really quickly, um, obviously, Apps Events, we've been a Google partner for 10 years. We do Google PD uh, literally across the whole world. We've worked in, in pretty much every continent. But we're also an ISTE partner. And those of you who know, ISTE is a bunch of standards for educators. Uh, it's all to do with the use of technology in education. It's not specific to one tool like Google. It, it's just relating to the pedagogy. And ISTE have an amazing certification called the ISTE Certified Educator. If you go to the website on the screen, you can get all the information. Normally, we run a two-day in-person course and then a six-month online cohort. But we've replaced the two-day in-person course with uh, some online sessions. So we've got times suitable for Middle East and suitable for California and for Europe. So please go to the website, check it out. It's really uh, an outstanding qualification. And people who've taken it say, number one, they learned a lot. But number two, it also helped them get a, a new job in an international school or help them get a raise or some kind of advancement in their current school. It's something that can really advance your career. So definitely check it out. Yeah, uh, and you can, you can also contact uh, Dan or myself directly. So Definitely. And just one more thing as well. Also... Um, G Suite Enterprise for Education, Giuseppe. Apps Events is now a G Suite Enterprise for Education partner. Um, it's a lot of extra tools. I mean, obviously, G Suite for Enter, well, Google Workspace is called now for, for education, is free. But with Giuseppe or G Suite Enterprise, you get a bunch of extra features. For example, with Meet, you can record your lessons. You can have breakout room, attendance tracking, Q&A, smart noise cancellation. You've also got originality reports uh, in classrooms, so you can get student originality reports. You've got loads of great admin tools. So, uh, Veronica, you can see the link on the screen. Yes. Or if, if you even put a message in the chat, we can give you a one-month trial straight away. Literally, I can give you a trial before the end of this webinar. So if you're interested, put a message in the chat, go to this link, and we'll get you set up on a free trial. Every school I know who's gone to Giuseppe loves it and doesn't want to come back, so check it out. Thanks. That's all. Thank you so much, Dan. So I would like to also introduce you to our uh, great trainers. As you can see, Lina and Jane are already here. Uh, Georgina is going to be the last presenter. So first, first presenter is going to be Jane. So hi, Jane. Hi, Veronica. Hi, everyone. It's, I'm Jane. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for joining us, Jane. Yeah, I'm so happy uh, to be here. <laughs> uh, how are you doing? What's the weather? I... I'm I'm good. It's um it's ra it's been raining for the past few weeks here. Okay, and it's also evening for you, I suppose. Yes, yes. <laughs> okay, we appreciate your participation, and we are looking forward to listening to your presentation. Also, what I would like to mention: so 
if anyone likes, I suppose everyone likes it. So please uh, push a like button on a YouTube. Thanks for that. Okay, so Jane, I will give you the space. Uh, so uh, should I uh, add your presentation on the screen right now? Yeah, I can, I, I'll yeah. do it. I got it covered. Okay. <laughs> okay, thank you, Jane, and enjoy it. And see you in a minute. <laughs> yes, thank you so much, Veronica. Okay, so hello, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, everyone, wherever you are in the world. Again, my name is Jane. I'm coming to you from Cebu, Philippines, and it's 10 p.m. where I am. So forgive me if I suddenly start yawning, but I told myself to do 10 push-ups for every yawn, so that should help me stay awake. So in this session, we will look at the settings, features, tools found in dedicated design software that are also available in Google Slides, as well as how we can use them in our own creative projects or with our students. Now, if you want to have a copy of this presentation, just go to bit.ly slash slide design tools on the screen. So this session will focus on how to use the tools rather than design principles. So let's get to it. Um, firstly, by the end of this session, you should be able to understand the rationale behind the design tools in slides. Second, start designing in slide. And lastly, export image files from slides. What are the benefits of designing in Google Slides? So it's easy to access anywhere as long as you have internet. It's easy to share. Um, you can export a file, uh, you can share via link, and you can embed on a website. It's also very easy to maintain ongoing changes, and all changes are saved automatically in the cloud. It's easy to collaborate with others when you find a typo, for example. So as long as you have an edit access, you can make the changes yourself. So it's very efficient. It's very time saving. So instead of going back and forth with your designer. And most of all, there's no additional software or hardware requirement. It's something you, your students, or your organization may already be using. And one account, all the benefits of Google. So here are some of the materials or design assets that you can create with Google Slides. You can make newsletters, magazines, PDFs, eBooks, flyers, brochures, posters, social media cards, social media cover photos, certificates, invitation cards, menu cards, greeting cards, blog post covers, product labels, infographics, vectors, illustrations, logos, you name it. Your imagination is the limit because what separates one graphic from another is actually just the image or document size. And here are the um, tools that we will be learning today. I have prepared um, three, three activities where I demonstrate um, the use of these tools. So you may follow along or replay later so you can do them at your own pace. And please make sure to hit like and subscribe to YouTube. I mean, subscribe to Apps Events YouTube channel. So activity number one, we are going to make an Instagram post. So I have here an empty um, Google slide. I'll just change the layout to a blank page or a blank slide. So instruction number one is create a 10 inch square image. So um, the tools that we will be covering in this activity is the canvas, um, guides and rulers, background, oops, and text. 
Okay. So canvas, just like in traditional art, the canvas is where where everything in your um, painting or drawing um, will be placed. So in Google Slides, you have two canvases, the inner canvas and the outer canvas. So everything you put place in the inner canvas, that that's the one that will be shown in the final output. So keep that in mind. Now, the best thing that I love about Google Slides is you can change the page document. So um, if you need a square canvas, all you need to do is click File, go to Page Setup, and then click the drop-down arrow and then choose Custom. So in my instruction, we need to create a 10-inch square image. So, so set that to 10 to 10. Now we have a square canvas. So this white area, this white area here, this is the inner canvas. So all your, all your design should be placed here. And this gray area is the outer canvas. Um, you can put some elements there, but it, they will not be um, shown in your final product. So next element is to add a background color or image. So background, say I want to have a, a blue background. So just click background, choose the color. I like this blue and it's done. And then there's also another option. You can do gradient, just click gradient. And then there are effects here. So just choose whatever you like. So my goal here is I want to create an Instagram post with a minimalist design. Uh, I want to put my Instagram username and then the words stay safe because you know um, the pandemic is still not over. And I want to remind everybody that I care for them and then they should, I, I wish them to stay safe. So you can go with um, a solid, solid background or a grade, gradient background. But for me, I want to have um, an image. So again, choose background, choose image, and then upload. Jane, I feel sorry. I don't want to disturb you. Just we have a question that Yelena Elich would like to get uh, the link to your presentation. So uh, if you can repeat it or write it in the in the comment would be lovely. Yeah, sure thing. Um, hold on, hold on. Let me get that one. I will put it in chat. Excellent. Thank you, Jane. <laughs> Sorry for disturbing. Just yeah, it's okay. It's okay. Wanted to help. Thank you, and I yeah. am leaving. <laughs> okay. Thanks, V. Thanks for the reminder. Okay. So I hope. I hope you got the link. Okay, so going back, uh, I want to add an image here. I want to have a mountain. Um, and then I used, the, there's, a, there's a website that I really like. Um, it's unsplash.com. You can get high quality, high quality royalty free images from this website. And then to credit the, the artist or the photographer, um, you can do so by tweeting. So there's a link there or a button that you just click and then thank you this artist for giving me uh, or for sharing this um, artwork. So it's really, really convenient because we have to give credit where credit is due. So I already downloaded uh, an image ahead of time. Let me just look for it. Okay, this is the mountain picture that I like. Okay, next is, so that's the next is, oops. Next is um, add guides. So another like um, design feature, what happened here? Um, hold on, yeah, okay, so, um, 
Another design feature that I really, really like in slides is they have rulers. So you can, you can make sure that everything is centered or aligned. So as a best practice, it's before you put some text and pictures, um, it's a best practice to add some guides to your, to your canvas. Now to do that, you can go to view and then guides and then show guides. And then it will display this um, grid, four by four grid. So you would know where the center is. Then I also would like to enable the, the snap to guides so that when I move things around, I it will, Google slide will automatically compute or show you the, the, or I mean, it will automatically align the, the, your elements like your text or your images. So to do that, just view guides, I mean, snap to, and then you can choose grid or guides. So me, I choose guides. It's something um, you can also find in, in um, dedicated, um, software, design software. So next um, step is to add uh, the text, stay safe. So just click this text box and then stay safe, highlight, and then choose a font that you like. Um, I want to color it white and then adjust the size. So I'm using a Windows um, laptop. And if I hold Control Shift, in the increase or decrease, I mean the less than or greater than arrow keys, I can adjust the, the font size. So I'm used to doing that. But you can also use the this um, interface in the Google Slides interface. But I'm more comfortable using the keyboard shortcut. So just, just adjust it to whatever size you want until you're satisfied. So just make sure that everything is aligned so you know where the center is. So if I click and drag that, okay. If you can see that red marker, that means if you release, they will be aligned, automatically aligned. So that's the use of the snap to, snap to guides earlier. Next step is to add my Instagram username. So again, I choose the text box. Um, I just type IG at hello Jane Vassil. So this is my Instagram username where I mostly post food, just food photos, everything I eat, I document. <laughs> yeah, so and then just change the font color, the size to whatever you like. And then, yeah, drag it until you see the red marker. Okay, so everything is centered. Now, um, if you want to get rid of the of the guides, hide it from your site. Just click view, guides, and then uncheck the show guides. Or you can bring it back. And then just adjust the, just adjust until you're happy with your, with your, with, yeah, with the placement of the text. Now, Aside from this um, grid um, guides, you can also manually add additional guides. Like for example, I want to make sure that there's a one inch um, space between the stay safe text from the center and then another one inch space from the center to, the, to my um, Instagram username. So you can do that by 
um, place your cursor to the ruler. Like we have two, two rulers here. So um, top ruler, just drag and you would see a line and then make sh look make sure because the this is a 10 inch um, canvas so the center is five so one inch before is f number four and then one inch after is six okay so i have my guides so s stay safe is okay but my my Instagram username is not aligned, so I will adjust until okay, and they they are aligned. But um, if you're if, if this is something very OC, but you don't really have to do this. I'm just um, showing because there might be a need for you to have like a lot of guides in the future, like if you have so many things going on. So that is one way of um, adding guides. And then to get rid of the guides, just go to view guides and then clear guides, and then they will be gone. But if if you're confident with your, your judgment, with your, you can just um, not use, you can opt not to use guides and then just adjust it adjust your elements. When I say elements, I'm referring to text, I'm referring, I'm referring to lines, images, icons, everything that you put in your graphic. So this is like very, very basic. It's good for me, it's already good. I can download this and then I'll, put, I'll post this on my Instagram. So to do that, um, just click file download and then I can save it as a JPEG or as a PNG image. Now let's um, go a little bit advanced. Yeah, so um, if I want to move things around, I have to, like if I want to adjust, I have to click one by one, I click, for example, I want to test how it would look like if I put the, that word there. And then, so I have to do it one by one. So if I don't want to adjust the position one by one, what you can do is um, I select the two text and then right click and then group. So now that you group them, okay, let's. So you can move them not one by one, but together. Okay. And then Another thing you can do to make your design better is to use a uh, font pairing. So you can Google, sometimes creativity is not coming up with something original. You don't have to know everything, but you can just be resourceful. So just, you can go to Google and then search for font pairing. And then like um, this one, I, I found a chart on Pinterest. So I'm using um, this one, Yellowtail and Aleo. So where is it? Yeah. So if you're not, if you don't know, if you're stuck, like what font should I use? So you don't have to think, just, just use Google search and then you will have like a lot of suggestions. Okay, and then if you don't want to use um, fonts, let me just duplicate this. You can actually use your own handwriting in Google Slides. So you can just click online and go to Scribble 
and then you can use your own handwriting. Of course, my handwriting is not so good. Jane, I like it. <laughs> Thank you, Veronica. Oops. Okay, hold on. My mouse is not cooperating with me. But but you know that you you get the drill. And then with your handwriting, with as you can also change the color and then the thickness. Yeah. I'll just let's just stick with this one. And then if you want to add decorations, um, you can make use like a border, for example. Um, you can make use of shapes. And then to make sure that we have uh, a good border, I'm gonna add a guide. It's half an inch, so I'm just gonna drag the guide. So I would know where to draw my border. Okay, I have added a guide. And then I'm gonna go to shape. then draw a square or rectangle and then make some adjustments so it's perfectly aligned with the guide that I made. And then since we're making a border, um, we need to get rid of the fill. So click this fill icon, set it to transparent, um, set the border color or line color to white, and then you can ad also adjust the thickness until you are you get a satisfying thickness. Now, um, one concept that you need to understand when designing is layers. So a layer is like a stack of paper. So the first thing or first element that you add will be um, at the last, it's last in, first out. So if, Earlier, I added a background, so it's here. And then I added the stay safe text, so it's here. And then I added my um, Instagram username, so it's here. Then I added the border, so it's here. So that's um, um, that's how layers works. Um, the last thing that you add it's is the one that is closer to your eyes. So now, if I want to edit the stay, say stay safe text, I am I can't do that because the first layer now is the the square or the border. So to to be able to edit the stay safe text, right click and then order and then send backward or send to back. So it's now pushed backward. Now I can edit the say safe text. Then I can adjust adjust it. Uh, Veronica, am I over time? <laughs> I, I didn't really contest the, the hours. I feel like I'm over time. <laughs> yeah, Jane, you have two minutes. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> it's just like uh, Jane really feel free to finish. How do you how do you how do you feel? Yeah? Yeah, because I'm still at like uh, activity number one. Uh, okay. Okay, so how many how many more activities do you have? Uh, it's good. Let's just finish this one, and then I can stay later on. If if the audience wants more, I can do another demo. Okay, so then maybe later because yeah. Lina, Lina is waiting. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Okay, and then um, okay. So see, so here are some of the designs, uh, alternate designs that I came up with earlier. Um, here I change it to a, I added like a filter. So to do that, um, to do that, just, I also added a square. See, uh, let me just change my canvas. Yeah, so you can see I added a square, but it's transparent. So in the fill portion, uh, you can go to custom, and then there's actually a transparency 
uh, scale here. So that's how you add um, a filter. That's how you can add a filter to an image. So this is a cooler. I, I want to change it to like a warmer color, for example. So change the color and then go to custom again and then adjust the transparency. So it's now, it now has a cooler tone and then bring back the text. So the best thing about Google Slide is uh, if you don't, if you want to try different layouts, you can just duplicate the slide, your original slide, and then make changes and then create another duplicate and then make changes. So um, here are other versions that I made. Yeah, this one has um, dotted border. This one has a line. This one, the text, stay safe, are not aligned. And my two minutes is up. <laughs> Good. Thank you, Jane, for your presentation. I believe everyone everyone likes it. Uh, I don't know if you have a time so uh, to present something more. So uh, we can uh, we can tell people if anyone anyone likes more presented presentation. Yeah, I have. I, I got like cooler message. stuff. <laughs> yeah, yes. this, yeah. This is that was just the basic, but I have more cooler stuff. Or maybe I'll save it for next summit. <laughs> <laughs> You can, yeah, you will see. I know it's it's already late. It's already late for you, Jane. Yeah, so um, any questions for me? I think it's more like, Jane, that people really like like it. So everyone appreciates your, uh, your presentation. I don't find any question. It's like Tom messaging. I love using uh, transparent shapes on top of images. Such a useful tip. I, I really found useful that you can group them as well. That was also useful that you don't have to do like each each time and that was all, oh, that was good. So thank you, Jane. <laughs> yeah, so that was, that was, that yeah, was. Yeah, let me just show you some of the things that I made earlier. So if you want to know how to, how I made these, um just email me or <laughs> yeah 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 Jane at apps yeah, yeah. I, I, you, you can do like victor art i, I wanted to demo this it's a shame. maybe maybe next summit <laughs> yes Jane. you okay. should thank you. you should present more <laughs> yeah. yeah thank you so yeah. much veronica thank you so much jane thank you and have a great evening thank you so much so I would like to also uh, thanks again to Acer, our great partner, because we are able to run these free summits uh, just because of this great cooperation. So thanks again. And I think that we have Lina here. Hi, Lina. Lina, I can't hear you now. Oh. <laughs> Yes, Hi, great. Hello, so, hello, hello, Lina. Thank you. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, Lina thank is you. based in Qatar. <laughs> so, Alina, could you tell us a bit more about your background? Where are you teaching? What's your role? Sure, yes. Um, I would like to thank Jane for the amazing presentation. And uh, let me just present my slides so I can... Um, just a second. <laughs> no problem. Everyone has the time to read uh, the description of your presentation on the screen. So that's good. That's useful. <laughs> so everyone can see it. Perfect. I can see it, Lina. So I will add it on the, on the screen. Great. Oh, it's there. All right. So... Welcome to the Google for Creativity Summit. My name is Lina Othman. I work as a digital learning lead in Qatar Academy. 
I have more than 10 years experience in technology integration uh, within the IB framework. And uh, today I'll show you some fun and engaging ways to use Google Slides. Um, first of all, I just want to explain that uh, this is not a how-to session, so I'm not going to um, go through details or how to create the slides, but to show you some application using Google Slides and Hyperlink, which can be um, a great way to use the dis uh, for distance learning or even beyond distance learning as well. Thank you, Lina. I am, I am really looking forward to listening to your presentation too. <laughs> All right, so the first method is based on a choose your own adventure theme. Um, I find it very effective as it focuses on students' agency. As you know, it's important because students who are uh, engaged actively in, the, in their education, um, uh, it can build deeper understanding of content. Uh, so you can use this method in two ways. The first one can be easily introduced for elementary students as it is created by the teacher. Uh, when, while the student can take ownership of their own learning by choosing the learning process. Uh, I'll explain more in, uh, in further slides. Uh, actually, in the next slide, I'll show you some examples. Uh, students can choose uh, what will happen next in the story. They can choose what is the next event and what's the next consequence of their choice. Um, and that gives the students the confidence with decision-making, critical thinking, and problem-solving. Uh, the other way is mainly targeting middle and high uh, school students, as the whole adventure is written by them. It's a very constructive way, actually, for students to enhance their reading comprehension skills by pulling out key details for an action or, um, or a mystery novel to create the uh, summaries using collaborative tools. Um, they will use those, these details and apply potential cause-effect relationship to develop new plot lines and write their own uh, choose-your-own-adventure stories. And this project can take place in a student showcase, which allows students to read and evaluate other work uh, using their own devices. So in this slide, you can, uh, you'll see some examples of it. Um, let's start with The Secret Village, which is a story. Uh, actually, I find it on one of the teacher resource website. Uh, you'll see the link in the reference page. So let me take you to it. All right, so I'm going to present to see it in full mood. That's the story. Actually, it's created by the teacher. So uh, the teacher can share it with the student and the students can choose um, their, own, um, their own choice and make their own story. So uh, for example, in this story, there's a girl uh, who lost her parents and she decided to explore the house. She found a map. The student can choose whether uh, the main character can walk to it or ignore it. So basically, it's just a slide that you can put your uh, events in it and have choices for the student to choose. These choices are buttons with links to the next slide or uh, whatever slide you... Uh, I'll explain more actually in the planning section. So let's say the student chooses to walk to it. Uh, what does the map lead? Maggie wondered. So they can explore the map or throw in the bin. It's actually, I find it a very interesting and engaging way because now students, um, they're more into games and now the games are changing to give also a player agency. So it's a good way to use it. Um, the other way is the student learning. Let me show you an example. So for example, I'm gonna present it. Uh, I just uh, choose a topic that is aligned to my unit and put the central idea for the students. So uh, we are go going to learn about migration in this unit. Students will click on start learning. It's actually a fun way because it feels interactive to them. Um, so this way, I really like it because it gives the students uh, the di different options to choose from uh, how they want their learning to be. Uh, would they prefer to listen to something, read or watch? 
They can even conduct, conduct an interview, research, or build an experience, uh, build and experiment. So I give them the choice to choose one from each row. Uh, as we are learning about migration, they can listen. So when they click on this button, they will be re redirected to a podcast where they can listen and uh, uh, learn more about migration. While if they click on the next one, they can read an article uh, or a report about migration. Uh, they can also watch a video or uh, conduct an interview. It gives the student the choice and they will not feel constrained to one option only. Um, this is for the learning process, but it also can be used as assessment or uh, to show the le learning outcome. I also find this uh, uh, online, which is great. So the student can choose how to share their learning. Uh, they can compose a piece of writing, record their voice, make a video. So many options in this choice board. And again, it's all based on links. So you can just create uh, a table and link each square to um, a platform where he can write or record and share it with you. Uh, as for the sharing, it can be done through uh, many platforms. In my school, we use uh, Google uh, Classroom so they can post their assignments or their sh learning um, outcomes through it or CISO or any other um, platform. All right, so let's proceed with the slides. So the first step, step is planning it. Is it easy to plan? Um, actually, creating the slide, it's very easy. It's just uh, links, as I explained before, but the planning part uh, can take some time uh, unless you organize it well. So as I mentioned before, you can either uh, create the story or ask the students to create it based on the age. Um, this planner, I use it with the students, uh, middle school, or if you want to use it with high school, you can just give them the planner to uh, make their work easier and creating the story easier for them. So I have here a template. I'll share also the slides with you. And then you can have uh, all the resources. Here, as you can see, I am forcing the students to make a copy so they don't miss with the original page. OK, so I share this with the students and ask them to plan their story. So they can, here are the instructions. They can uh, click Control D for duplicating the shape and move it to the works, workspace. They can here uh, write their first event. Of course, they have to invent their story. And then they can make the choices. OK. They can choose. Um, they can put the choices here, first choice, second choice. They can also make the second event uh, until the end of the story. So these squares, I mean circles, are meant to organize the events. This will make the work easier for them so they can uh, immediately, um, so they can immediately uh, just transfer their thoughts and ideas to the slides. And of course, they can share the planning with the teacher so uh, she can review with the student and see uh, what improvements can they make. All right, so I have also some templates here, another templates. I shared it with the students to make it easier for them. As you can, as you'll see now, it's just a deck of slides where they can just fill in the information. Of course, it's up to you. If you are focusing on the comprehension, the thoughts, the ideas, the uh, writing, you can just let them start the slides from scratch, or you can share um, a template with them just like this. All right. 
So how can you use this? There are so many applications that, this, that you can use in class for history, science, math, uh, PE, or even STEM. There are so many ideas. You have to um, ignite your creativity. Here is another idea. Um, um, in our school, as you know, uh, because of the current situation and the COVID, uh, we have a maker space, which is a place where we have some robots, uh, Lego, um, uh, some uh, tools to build. But now, because uh, the students have the uh, bubbles and they cannot interact with each other, they cannot use the same resources. So I came up with the idea of creating a virtual fab lab, which is uh, short for fabrication lab. And it's based on the same idea, which is linking um, linking the images or the text to another page. For example, and I shared with them, this is a great tool for distance learning. I shared with them uh, through their learning um, platform and they can just use it at home. Uh, for example, if they go to music, I have gathered some uh, resources, online resources for them to um, use and play and of course if they click on it they will be redirected to the website uh, here if they want to go back to the main page it's also a link and they can go back to the main page and explore other options and this is actually a great idea to make a choice board so the the ideas are unlimited you can use it for so many things in class Another way to use the hyperlinks and Google Slides is uh, the virtual art gallery. Uh, I had, I remember I had to use it with, in our school for an art exhibition where the students, uh, actually we were in lockdown and we had online learning. So uh, they shared uh, all their drawings and uh, learning outcomes through uh, uh, email or Google Classroom. So the teacher gathered all the resources and created a, a virtual art gallery. This is just a template that I found online and you can find it in the resource page. Um, you can share it uh, with parents. But if, of course, if you share the link from here, it will be shared as a um, as a presentation, as, as this view, I mean editing view, but you would like to share it as a presentation view. So I will give you a tip, which is changing here, the edit to present. If you share this link with present instead of edit, it will go directly to the present mode. So the parents will not go to each slide individu individually, so they can, navigate through uh, by clicking on the rooms and it will take them to the links. You can exit now, go to room C, and here you can just insert a picture for, their, uh, for the student work. Another tip I'd like to give you since I mentioned the present mode here, um, I, I think you remember the way I shared the template with the students uh, where I forced them to copy. It's actually, I did the same trick, which is changing the edit into copy. This way it will force the uh, recipient to create a copy of the slides you're sharing. All right, so. These are the resources that I used. And that's it for now. I actually went so fast and uh, uh, finished uh, faster than expected. Mm -hmm. If you have any comments or feedback, you can just click the button and uh, leave a comment or a feedback. Thank you everyone for listening. Lena, it was amazing. Thank you so much. Uh, I can see really uh, lovely comments. Everyone, everyone likes it. Uh, your tips and tricks. Uh, uh, people really appreciate a virtual fab lab. Uh, so, and also what I can see. 
but also your easy tab so really it would be great if you uh, if you can share uh, the link of the presentation with everyone of course sure um Ver Ver veronica i'm so sorry i didn't keep track of time so do you know how many minutes i have i still have <laughs> <laughs> we have we have uh, we have 10 minutes we have 10 minutes left uh but uh i think it's fine i have just I, i'm uh, wondering if jane's still here and she wants to show more idea of hers I, I will I will send, yeah I can see that yeah Jane is here Jane is here it's fine <laughs> I will bring her up yeah I'm still here uh, good thing I I had I had a feeling that <laughs> really you, you could you, we could use more of my demo so <laughs> I stayed yeah but Lina really great uh great presentation uh. I can see really lovely comments here. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. I hope I can join again and show you other great ideas that you can use in class. Yeah. Thank you, Thank you Lina. So, uh, Jane, uh, would you like to uh, show more? Oh, I can I see that jo Georgina is here. <laughs> ah, I can see Georgina is here. Perfect. Just in time. <laughs> okay, great. Hi, Georgina. Good evening, everybody. How's it going? Yes, it, it goes well. What about you? Thank you for joining us. <laughs> Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here today to share all about creativity and the presentations. I was catching them on the go on my way here and are <laughs> absolutely brilliant. Lena, congratulations. Well done. Some great tips that I'm looking forward to using at school. Thank you. Thank you, Georgina. Looking forward for your presentation. Thank you. Yeah, Georgina. I, I will add your your uh, presentation here. I mean, don't you, not your presentation, but the you know the title of the presentation. Uh, so it's going to be really exciting. I am also looking forward to listening to your presentation. I, I can see also comments from other people. They they are waiting for you. <laughs> That's very exciting. Well, thank you to everybody who's joining uh, on their morning if you're across time zones or afternoon or evening, and I'm really excited. So I have my um, slide deck here. Am I okay to go ahead and share that? Is that okay? Definitely. John Gina, also, if you want to tell uh, some bit background about, about yourself, like where are you based, what are you doing, so feel free. Absolutely. I have a slide for that, so stay tuned. <laughs> Good. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Georgina, and enjoy it. <laughs> okay, great. Well, again, I'm really excited to be here. I suppose it's not news for anybody that I am super passionate about creativity. So we are going to be diving in very shortly to investigate and discover and explore as much as we can about creativity across education. Um, so a little bit about myself. Um, well, first of all, sorry, the slide deck is there. So we'd love to have you guys uh, join in the slide deck live. So please feel free to join me at bit.ly slash 2KTEMFF, which is on the bottom of the slide. And I, oh, I see a few people hopping in. So that's wonderful. I love to have everybody live with me on the slide deck. If you have been to any of my Googly sessions before or in any other platform, you all know how much I absolutely love to collaborate with you all live on air. So thank you for hopping on the slide deck. Uh, so slide number four, all kinds of information about myself, but most importantly, all sorts of amazing communities and creative spaces where you guys can actually join me. So if you click on any of these links, you'll be able to go. And I'd love to continue the conversation going after the fact. So please feel free to join me in any of those. So for those of you who haven't met me before, my name is Georgina Dean, and I'm currently located in a man Jordan in the Middle East. So I'm really, really excited to be joining all sorts of educators around the world to share what I'm passionate about. Um, oh, hey, Fonz, nice to see you. Thanks for stopping by all the way from America. Super exciting. Um, I'm working here in the Middle East as Director of Learning Technology, so I'm supporting a K-12 nonprofit international school with their digital transformation and, of course, all things Googly and all things creativity. Uh, hey, Shannon, good morning. Also joining from America. That's awesome. Okay, cool. So let's dive in. Again, everything's there if you want to connect with me after the fact, no problem. 
Uh, today, very exciting, we're going to be exploring where are we at with creativity. So obviously, it's not news to anybody that a lot has happened in 2020. We're now just diving into 2021, and we need to reassess where are we at with creativity. So we'll take a look at that. We're also going to take a look where can we actually go to find creative inspiration. It is all around us, but does everybody actually know where we can go to find it? Uh, we'll take a look at some of the benefits of cultivating creativity, why it's so important, especially now, to support uh, your education community with creative uh, problem solving across education and also how can we cultivate it. Um, finally, some strategies, some pretty inspiring ideas on how you can get that started in your classes. So I don't have this in presentation mode because you all are going to see in a few minutes, a little bit later, how we're gonna dive in together. Let's take a look first, guys, at where we're at in the world with creativity. Let me know in the chat if you've seen this diagram before. Um, it's from an Adobe uh, creativity blog. And as you can see there, it's all about the state of creativity, how the global pandemic and cultural movements have impacted the creative industry. And what's really interesting with the growth of technology and ed tech, et cetera, around the world, creativity is like right in the heart, right in the center. And as we're going to see throughout today's session, it actually should be right at the heart of our student-centric approach to education. So I'm not gonna go through all the bubbles. Obviously we have a 30 minute session and I'm sure they'll call me on time when I come close to that. Um, but take a look into that and throughout the slide deck, everything is embedded with links to take you to places where you can read more about it and learn. Oh, hello, Greg, welcome. So if you click on this link, you'll see there and I'll just pull down the slide deck a little bit that there's a link. So if you click on it, it takes you directly to the blog where I took this information. So I do encourage you all to take a look at that. Um, and of course, in the speaker notes, there's information there to help you navigate as well. Basically, 2020 was all about redefining. And so where has that left us? That's left us with another R, which is reimagine. So now that we're redefining everything, how can we reimagine what education can look like to support our learners who are going to be in a very competitive workforce when they finish their educational studies and journey um, in creative spaces. So yeah, take a look at that. I do definitely encourage you guys. All right, are you ready to get creative? Let's go. So please go ahead and click on the Jamboard logo. The Jamboard logo will take you to a jam slide. And I would love to encourage all of you guys, and I'm just going to drop the link in here as well, just in case anybody wasn't able to access it so it's in the chat and basically what we're looking for guys is where do you take your inspiration from so when you click on the jamboard link it's going to take you to this deck here uh, which should be edit access yes awesome so i do encourage you guys to take a slide and i'd love you to use as many tools as you can along the left hand toolbar to share all the different things places sounds people all your favorite things where you draw your creativity from. So what inspires you on the daily in life, in professional development, in your classroom, and how are you taking that and inspiring your learners in the classroom also to get their creativity on? So I'm really looking forward to this. Please take an empty slide. Um, you just click right. If you're new to Jamboard, just use the arrows at the top and you can have a blank slide. And on the left-hand toolbar, you have things like the pen and marker tool. There's a little rubber there to rub out anything if you change your mind. The select tool is to move any asset, like any icon, any image that's on the board. And then you have our awesome sticky notes. So you can uh, use sticky notes to leave information, notes, ideas. And you can search for royalty-free images here in the Google search uh, image. So just like you can see there, I was searching for life. So it pulls up all sorts of goodies there. So feel free to use the royalty-free Google images. And then you have the shape toolbar and the text. So I'll leave you guys with that. And while you're sharing your own 
um, areas where you draw on your inspiration, I'm going to share something really exciting with you that I was, I had the privilege actually to attend um, just a few months ago was the Adobe for Education, Adobe Max. So Adobe for Education had a little part in Max, but Adobe is basically, you know, world renowned for their leading edge in creativity. And what I really love about that community is how I'm able to draw so much inspiration from the talent and I know Fonz is joining and he's just recently become um, an Adobe creative educator as well and he's really excited about his creativity journey in fact tell me if I'm wrong Fonzi but I think your one word 2021 if I'm not mistaking is create I think or possibly creative so let us know in the chat and if you also have a one word 2021 that can be related or is driven from creativity, please also feel free to share that on your jam slides. So I'm gonna loop back to this and give you guys a few minutes to create a creative slide deck. Yay, Shannon's excited about Adobe Max. I am, yeah, I remember she joined. So yeah, absolutely, it's super, super exciting. Okay, so let's head on back to our, there we go, slide deck. Okay, so you guys can keep, um, participating in the Jamboard. And I'm gonna take you a few takeaways that I took from attending the Adobe Max. Um, it was absolutely epic, guys. It Like I really had on this first um, keynote, I had goosebumps and it really just drives your inspiration. And I hope that any of you will take a little bit about the creative inspiration that you're hearing from all three of the speakers today to help inspire your lesson design, creative spaces, and just really igniting that spark with your learners. So I'm gonna take you through a few ideas. Uh, this is uh, Shantanu Narayan, apologies if I didn't pronounce that correctly. Um, he's basically the chairman, president, and chief executive officer at Adobe and he opened the keynote with two other people and he talked at the Adobe Max keynote all about creativity and how it is fueling digital economy and not just the digital economy but digital strategy that our education systems are going through. In fact, he said in his keynote, regardless of the organization, whatever the field of work is in, creativity is becoming a super powerful force all the way through. So if we have that in mind, and we know that the learners that we are supporting in the classroom need to be able to get and secure jobs in those types of fields, so then what are we actually doing to support that creative problem solving, critical thinking, and all those six C's in our classrooms today? So really, really powerful. He talks there about content fueling, digital strategy, creativity being everywhere. Um, and if you click on the slide, guys, the image, as I mentioned earlier, it is linked to the Adobe Max panel. And I would encourage you, if this is something that you're interested in doing, um, is to... Um, uh, is to uh, have some more PD professional learning over the next while, then you absolutely can uh, check out Adobe Max because they have over 350 sessions that are on demand. Uh, I saw Shannon there. Oh, hi, uh, Amara, nice to see you. And so if you would like to learn, um, you know, go and take a look at that. It's so amazing. So this is the keynote I was talking about and you can watch it. It's an hour and a half that you will not regret watching. So take a look at that. Um, I'm just picking out a few key points. Obviously, I'm not gonna go through the full two hours because then we get to take what we learn and take away from other areas of inspiration and we get to apply it in a googly way. So stay, stay tuned, we don't go anywhere. Okay, next idea on the deck is empowering every board. So we talk about student agency in the classroom, right? We talk about making sure that every student has a chance to create, to share, and to have their voice amplified. Hey, Gerardo, welcome. Gerardo's joining from Mexico. So nice to see you. Yeah, I'm, I'm really glad you like the resources. Please take everything you want. This slide deck is um, make a copy, reuse it, uh, share it with your staff. Just share all the googly creativity. Uh, goodness, guys, feel free. 
Um, right. So empowering, really, really important. He talks about why that and how creativity connects us, not only as in, in education or in different organizations, but globally, it unites us. We are united through creativity. I really, really implore you guys to um, go in and listen to the, the keynote there. Uh, the next slide talks about Accelerate. So creativity enabling productivity and collaboration and how technology is like um, I've put it in the speaker notes for you guys, technology is an invisible and powerful undercurrent of the creative process. One of my favorite quotes from Jansenu during the keynote and really drove my experience um, through the Adobe um, Adobe Max uh, conference. So yeah, absolutely go take a look. The next one, push. How are we pushing boundaries? Not necessarily technology. We're in the education industry. How are we leveraging what we have to push the learning boundary? How are we leveraging the tools that we have, the inspiration that is all around us to actually inspire creativity and push that boundary? How are we bringing learning to the forefront through creative problem solving? So really, really awesome. Um, the next one here is Inspire, obviously no news there, um, but I really like the way the focus on this infographic on the left side is Inspire, but also Be Inspired. And we're almost ready to come back to those jam slides, guys. So you've got about another minute or two, and then I'm gonna loop back to celebrate. What are the things that inspire you? And what are the things you're doing to inspire all of those around you? I kind of think of it as an infinite loop. Um, it's interesting that the Adobe logo is a little bit like the infinity loop, right? Um, the creative cloud logo. And that is, um, that is basically the essence is that creativity never actually stops. It only continues to evolve. And so what are we doing to make sure that we are reimagining with that and supporting that growth across education? So really, really powerful. He talks there, I wrote in the speaker notes, your passion, hard work and insights drive to innovation. And now more than ever in the world, we need creativity. Ida says Adobe for EDU is awesome. Yes. And you know what else Adobe is awesome for? Because they are partnered with Google and we're going to take a look at that a little bit later. Um, so the last slide, I'm almost ready to loop back to your jam boards, guys. So I hope you guys have had a chance to share some googly goodness on your jam slides. This last slide here, uh, he's basically coming to the end of his clip for creativity uh, in the keynote. And he says, creativity is for all. And I really, really um, it's one of my favorite hashtags. If you have been uh, professional learning networking with me across uh, some different social networks, you'll know that creativity for all is one of my favorite hashtags ever. And it really speaks to education because our learners deserve to have their voices shared, right? And amplified. We talked about that a little bit earlier. So if we try to um, empower and enable creativity through different mediums, strategies, spaces, etc., then we are actually ensuring that that creativity is going to evolve and across the classroom, across the year group, across the grade, the faculty, the department, your whole school community. So it's the fact that keep creating, keep inspiring, keep changing the world together. Um, there was also, there's many, as I mentioned before, there's about 350 different um, on-demand sessions that you can check out that will just flood you with uh, creative inspiration. Um, there's one that I picked out here from Lorraine Bardeen, and she was talking about digital transformation in education. And she said, it's no longer an opportunity it's table stakes. That may be a little bit of corporate jargon. However, in the education world, we need to still be aware of that because guess what? Our learners that are going to be graduating from our communities are going to be in a job force where this is critical. So it's no longer an option. We need to make sure that we are supporting them to thrive in a very competitive 
world. All right, so are you guys ready? We're gonna dive in. So again, this is Adobe Max. I just shared a little bit of creative inspiration. It's where I like to go to get a lot of my creative inspiration. And you can click on any of the images in the slide deck to take you to, to Adobe um, Max. So just as I had here, it was already open. There we go. So you can watch on demand anything from the conference and it's super, super powerful. I think we have a little bit of time. So I'm going to just play a couple of uh, minutes. Awesome. So just a little bit uh, to get you guys hooked, a little bit of creative inspiration, amazing uh, people that you're going to see that you saw in the little video clip there. So go check it out. Go check out what you can learn and what you can provide to your students to help them with their creative journey. Okay, so let's check out the, the Jamboard guys. Yeah, there's no sound on the video, Shannon. It was just a bit of a teaser. You guys will actually have to click on the link to go there yourself. So do so. Tag me, tag Apps Events, tab Adobe for Education. Let us know how you're feeling about creativity. Okay, so let's check out the Jamboard and see how you guys have got on. Oh, that's lovely. So somebody says they draw their inspiration from possibly gamification. And let me know in the chat exactly what you are referring to. I'm just going to give you my interpretation as I read through the jam slide. But it's really great to see the risk taking you guys are taking on the slides. If you'd like to um, leave your Twitter handle or social media, then definitely you'll all be able to collaborate together afterwards. But yeah, feel free to take a copy of this jam deck to um to continue that going um shannon is very excited with gifts oh i like the arrow in the center nice one shannon so um and feel free to share in the comments um anything you like i've got my eye on the comments on the side so let me know uh, so she's got a lot of light bulbs a lot of green a lot of sparkle the universe people connecting through the world i absolutely love it awesome Thank you, Shannon, for participating. I think I pushed the wrong button. Ida says, Adobe Spark, brainstorming, magazines, creative cloud, Behance. Yes, super cool that you're on Behance. I look forward to connecting with you there. That's awesome. Um, and we have here, is this Fonzie? I think this is Fonzie's Bitmoji, yes. Um, and let me see here. Hi, James, nice to see you from the APAC region. James is not going to be impressed. I never remember which country he's in because he hops around so often. But welcome to him. And James, it's super late for you. You didn't have to stay up for this. You could have watched it on demand. Thanks for joining. Um, so inspiration from illustrating, educational podcast, awesome. Teachers are feeling overwhelmed, absolutely. And so we need an easier workflow. We need to be able to put everything back in their hands, let them navigate things at their own pace. You are definitely speaking my language. And it's Greg, not Fonzie. I'm glad you corrected me because your Bitmoji looks similar to Fon. So thank you for um, clarifying. And um Note to myself, to Georgina, maybe to wear my glasses next time I present so I can see for sure. But that is wonderful. Um, ah, yes. And there's the sticky note. Awesome. So you can connect with Greg on social as well. Okay, awesome. Yeah, you know how I roll, Amara. You know how I roll. Creativity everywhere. There he is, just the person I was speaking about. There's uh, Fonz, just achieved his Adobe Creative Educator. And Fonz is also, I call him Fonz, sorry, because we're connected through Google Innovator Project. Um, but you can, so he's an innovator, a trainer, and also an Adobe Creative Educator. So his word 2021 is create. Thanks for sharing that, Fonz. That's so cool. And um, 
I'm interested to know fonts. Let us know in the chat. This little branding icon on the left hand side with the VR. I'm curious to know what uh, your process was, what your application um, of choice was. Did you sketch it first? Did you use a Google drawing? Did you use an Adobe software? Share with us how you developed that. I'm going to come back to that a little bit later. So connect with Fonz. And Farah is here. Hi, Farah. Farah uh, works with me here in Jordan. It's so nice to have you on the session tonight, Farah. So welcome. And shout out to Farah, who actually did her very first Google for Education uh, training session at our school yesterday. So congratulations to her. She super rocked a YouTube channel. I even learned a couple things from her. She was amazing. So guys, if you haven't connected with Farah, make sure you do that. Here is her Twitter handle. She is on fire. As uh, she says that games inspire her, I totally agree. She's amazing at gamification. Her and James would get along very well. You guys need to talk after. Uh, TED Talks um, and other educators. Absolutely. James, you got your level two today. Congratulations. That's so cool. I just am feeling the creativity oozing out of my pores, guys. This is awesome. And you're all just fueling my creative fire. This is wonderful. Okay, let's take a look here. We also have uh, someone says they're inspired by their students needs. I love that. So your students inspire you and also your PLN, your professional learning network. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay, cool. So thank you for sharing your Jamboard ideas with us. Oh, we have another sticker. Awesome. Please feel free if you're just tuning in now and you didn't join live, please feel free to join us on the slide deck here. You'll be able to get into all the links. Here is the bit.ly if you're just tuning in now and we'll drop that again in the chat. And then we're down here on slide seven and we're just doing a little creativity jam together through Jamboard. And actually we're down here on slide 16 since I was looping back to it. So thank you to everybody who participated participated. I'm going to leave that live until the end of the session. So please, if you would like to share and add more to this Jamboard, I uh, encourage you to do so. Gerardo, I thought I recognized the sticker. That's so awesome. Gerardo is joining all the way from Mexico. It is so lovely. Um, Ida says in the chat they're working on their level two badge and they got their level one uh, Google EDU. Congratulations, that is so cool. The Google for Education certification Definitely a little different than the Adobe certification, both still amazing and both go, in my opinion, hand in hand since we're able to use Googly tools, uh, Google for education applications to um, to inspire creative problem solving in education as well as the Adobe tools. So yeah, well done to you. Okay, guys. So. Um, I'm lucky I had a few extra minutes, but we need to keep rolling along because the time is ticking. So let's dive in. Okay, I invite you all now, please, to join me on slide 17. Very, very exciting. I would like everybody, please, to grab their text box or anything they want on that whiteboard and share with me what are the benefits of cultivating creativity. I'm going to leave slide 17 and I'm going to loop back in three slides to check what your ideas were while I share the next couple of slides. So please go ahead on slide 17 and you can go ahead and you can add, for example, a shape if you want and you can color your shape just like this and you can do things in creative ways. Please work together collaboratively uh, with me on slide 17 to share your ideas of what the benefits are of cultivating creativity. And I'm going to share with you a few of my ideas while you're starting. Okay, so here we go. On slide 18, we have here a sketch note that I drew, but it's actually a mashup. So for those of you who are new to sketch noting, a sketch note is basically a visual illustration of ideas or learning, etc. that has both text and images together. 
A lot of people use sketchnoting using um, digital applications only. Some people sketchnote on paper, some people sketchnote with a pen on a digital whiteboard. So there's lots of different ways that you can do it. But what I really love about slide 18 is that this was the beginning of the SD um, certification course that I just uh, completed actually last week. So that was pretty exciting. And in this, we actually cover and if you're curious to know more about ISTE guys or anything, please just check out the speaker notes on my slides. There's information and there's links there as well as a link embedded in each of the images, okay? And I see a pop on the screen. So yes, if you would like to get certified with ISTE, uh, check out the link that's on your screen. Um, and if you'd like to learn about the ISTE standards, those are also linked into the image. But so definitely any of the three links you're seeing on the screen will definitely support you with ISTE certification. It's probably one of the best learning, professional learning experiences and development that I personally have gone through in the last couple of years. The amount of hands-on practice on how to understand the importance of pedagogy coming first finding the needs of the students and being able to leverage different kinds of technology in creative and innovative ways, making sure that we address the six C's and making sure we take care of all sorts of digital citizenship, media literacy. There's just so much packed into ISTE, which why it takes, um, I think it took me what, like eight months, nine months, I guess. So yeah, you have uh, quite a while to get through and it's brilliant. So now that that plug is out the way, but definitely check out ISTE guys, it's amazing. Um, this sketch note here was actually a Google slide deck. So I downloaded this Google slide as a PNG, which you can do on a Google slide deck by going up to file and you can go to download and you can click on PNG or JPEG, whichever you prefer. And that will download just this slide as either a JPEG or a PNG. Then what I did was I imported it into my iPad and I opened it on Adobe Fresco, which is the painting drawing app and I sketch notes. So all of the colors and the drawings, the illustrations, those are mine that I did on top of the uh, Google slide and then I saved that and then re-added it to the Google slide deck after. So this is just one example of how Adobe and Google play really well together and how you can app smash and mash up learning in creative ways with your students. Just one way. We're going to get to a few others. And I think I have to move a little quickly now because of time. Um, and I'm going to loop back to slide 17 in just one second. So we're not going to dive into these, but these are here for you. When we thought, think about why what are the benefits of um, cultivating creativity, why we should be creative across education. These images here are embedded with, again, resources that I do encourage you to go read. You can click on the images and they'll take you to the spaces where I did some learning a while ago. And you can see there, uh, one of my creative mentors, Carrie Bachman, who also hosts uh, Doodle and Chat on, um, on uh, Saturdays in the afternoons. Um, and you can check out how to do sketch noting and get creative there. The other images are also embedded. So 12 benefits of creativity. Again, not gonna bore you by reading off the slide, but you can dig into them. Uh, one of also my favorite books ever on creativity by Sir Ken Robinson um, is listed. The sketch note is basically based on his book um, and you can read about it at teachthought.com and sketchnoting for educators. So if you're worried that you don't have any drawing or illustrating talent, trust me, you are not alone because I'm not a professional artist either. And if I can get started with little things like this and we can learn together, even when you're 40 years old, like me, very excited to be 40 by the way, um, then anybody can learn. And so how are we, again, providing that space for anybody to learn, whether your students and your learners are teachers, if you're an instructional coach or a director like myself, or if you're in the classroom teaching, and I actually do teach a few hours as well, then how are you supporting this process across the curriculum? Okay, so I'm gonna loop back to slide 17. I see some people are still writing and that is okay, but we're just going to celebrate a few people. So. Benefits of creativity is problem solving. Love it. Yep. 
It gives opportunity to think outside the box. I love it. Make learning life more interesting and fun. Of course, we can't have learning without fun. I'm so glad you, somebody wrote that. And thank you to those who participated. It gives students the opportunity to showcase their learning. Awesome. Uh, draw on their interests and passions. Super, super important. How are they going to feel creative and have fun learning if they're not interested in what they're learning about, right? Hey, Patricia, welcome. I'm so glad you like sketch noting. Oh my goodness, let's connect. Connect with me. I'm all about it. I'm learning to sketch note. I'm learning to develop my skills and I absolutely love it. Um, per somebody on the bottom of the board said um, space to stretch. I love that because muscles like when we draw when we when we paint when we play music they're all muscles right that we need to practice and develop and the more we practice the stronger those muscles become just like learning a sport and just like learning a language and so we can absolutely apply that talking to innovation and growth mindset so thank you for sharing that's awesome okay we're going to move along, guys. So slide 20 is talking about cultivating creativity visually. How can we get this done? So again, I'm not going to read off the slide, but there's some bullet points there for you to keep in mind. Spark. How are you sparking their creativity? How are you igniting that spark? Are you giving them space? Are you hooking them with questions? Are you doing something like what I just did, which was play like 10 seconds of a video and people are like, I can't hear the sound. Oh, I want more. Like, how are you hooking your learners to want to be creative in the process? Make sure that you ignite their curiosity. There's something called the... Um, candle of curiosity and being able to keep that burning right from when uh, students join school at a very young age all the way to graduation and beyond because I'll tell you my candle of curiosity is burning all the time if you know me outside of uh, googliness and sessions etc I'm always learning and I'm always enjoying the process make sure you give them space guys so again and these bullet points here on this slide deck, this is all for your lesson design. So when you're creating your lessons, these are important things that you want to keep in mind to create when you are designing for creative problem solving. So this one right here, this is really important. A lot of people don't remember to allow that space. I always... Um, when I, because we use Google Classroom as our learning management system at my school, and when we um, post our assignments, at least for myself, I always give my students an extra day or two. It's never due the same way. Why? Because creativity is not set on a timer and it is different for every individual and that it goes the same for our learners. So we need to give them time and space. Maybe you start it in class. Maybe they finish it off later. Maybe you've done a flipped classroom lesson and they've started to create their sketch note and they brought it with them or whatever it is that you're asking them to create. So make sure you give them that space. Make sure that the ideation process is collaborative, just like we've done today, guys. All of these strategies that we shared together in this session, you can do with your students. This is how you can get them to do it, okay? So take, take note of those, give them a try, take risks, and just watch how beautiful your creativity culture will change in your classroom. Um, reflect, there's nothing new there. It's important to reflect for metacognition, but also a lot of people don't know about this. Make sure you're giving time to reflect on the creativity process. Why did you make that choice? Why were you interested in this? The creativity process in and of itself deserves reflection of its own because the more we become aware of the choices we make, uh, the more we're going to ensure that the learning is deep. Okay. Celebrate, everybody loves to be celebrated. So yes, please make sure, even if the student, you know, only draws a few things, they only design a few things, it doesn't have to be like, we're not all Van Goghs yet. I say the word yet, because you never know, right? Uh, I don't have much faith that I'm gonna be the next Van Gogh, guys. There's no, no joke there, but definitely could be um, a chance for any of our students. Okay. So let's move along here. Um, so again, those are the lesson design tips, guys. So, you know, save that 
consider that when you're creating your lessons for your students. So let's dive into some strategies. I think we're going to go over time. I'm just going to ask my lovely host if that's okay for a few minutes. If not, we'll skip these activities. So I'll just let them message me in the chat and let me know if that is okay, Veronica, uh, if we are going over or or Jane or not. Yeah, fine, or, Georgina. I'll leave it up to you. <laughs> that's okay. Oh, thank you. That's so kind of you. Just give me another five, 10 minutes max, okay? Definitely. I can see that Come people on. love it, you know, so I don't want oh, to disturb it. <laughs> Oh, that's very kind of you. Thank you. It's my lucky day because normally if James were here, James would be like, oh, 30 minutes is done. Yeah, he's oh, you, Veronica. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Okay, so let's dive in, guys, and let's go to slide 23 and 24. This is a group activity live. I am so excited about this. Are you guys ready? Okay, here we go. So this is something that you can do on Google Slides. So as you can see, these squares are basically shapes with a transparent color that I've added, but you can't move the boxes. You can move the text box, but the boxes don't move. That's because I used the trick I said earlier and I downloaded this page as a PDF, uh, sorry, as a PNG, and I added it to my background by choosing an image. When I did that, now I have a background that is a creation space. Okay, guys, so now this is up to you. I encourage all of you to get into Teams. There are two slides. If we need more than that, we can just duplicate the slide, so feel free. Please get into Teams of, um, let's go with two or four if there's more people. Please write your name on a team and you need to discuss together. You can either use the speaker notes at the bottom or you can use comments at the side of the slide deck. So I'm just gonna make this a little bit bigger. So you can use the comment box at the side as well to create your teams. I'm going to give you guys about three minutes. It's not a lot of time. So sometimes it's important to test creativity on a timer. So you're going to have about three or four minutes. You need to come up with your own topic. Oh, you're welcome, Patricia. My pleasure. Uh, come up with your topic. Thank you, Shannon. Shannon's in team two. Shannon, super creative, also learning to sketch note right now. Go connect with her. Feel free to jump on slide 24 or slide 23. I see there that I need to change the team numbers. Sorry about that, guys. Team three and team four. There we go. And I'd like you guys to sketch. Now, the idea of this game here, this gamified way of of creativity, there we go, um, is each of you in the team can only have one tool. So one person can choose color, one person can choose a shape, one person can choose text, another person can choose line, another person can choose an image. As you can see, the toolbar is pretty big. So there is enough for you to have groups if you're doing this in your classroom with like four or five people in a team. You may decide to have your teams ready before you get to this activity. Since we're live on air and we don't know who's coming, I'm going to leave this up to you guys to get started together. So Suzanne and Shannon are in team two. Please go ahead then and double click on your topic and choose a topic together. Again, you can communicate in the YouTube chat or you can use the speaker notes or the comments in the Google slide. And this is also a really great example, guys, if you are going back to in-person or hybrid learning, you may have some students that are in the classroom with you and some students that are learning from home and joining you either synchronously offline or asynchronously altogether. So things like this where we're actually, well done Shannon, actually going to collaborate together um, offline but synchronously is a great example of how you're going to be able to manage that situation as we start our reentry back to school. So I do encourage you guys to um, give that a go. I will um, also give it a go on team one. Okay, guys, so who wants to join me? And then once you've figured out your team, then you can decide. So Shannon said she chooses shape. So then Suzanne's going to choose something else. Um, if anybody wants to hop on with me, you're welcome. So the idea is actually maybe what I'll do um, just because we we never know how many people are going to join the activity. Maybe I'll join Shannon and Suzanne and we'll do an example together. Let's do that. And then guys, there's a second slide. If you want to create a third one and you're joining in the deck, please feel free. Okay, so 
Shannon's doing shapes. Suzanne, let us know in the chat what you're going to be doing. Oh, that's okay, Ida. Please stay safe. I, I heard you, I read that you're driving, so please stay safe. Please don't do anything unsafe. Um, okay, so I'm going to be a line. So I'm going to be a curved line and I'm going to choose, okay, let me just see here. Oh, there we go. I can pick points on my slide. Okay, so we need a topic in there, girls. Oh, Veronica just popped a super cool link on my stream, guys. Win free seats to a boot camp or a summit. I would take a look at that link. Okay, cool. So I'm going to maybe make a mountain scenery with my curved line. We're definitely not going to take the whole, there we go, so I have my line. We're definitely not going to take too much time, but the idea here, guys, is that each person of the group is only allowed one tool to create something, either to create a scene, to maybe you're investigating an SDG, for example, and you want to create a, a picture or a, an input, or what does it mean to you? Uh, maybe you're taking a look at plant growth in science or the cells. Maybe you're going to try and solve COVID with your IB students. The Oh, there's a topic in there now, joy. Okay, I'm excited about that. So I'm a line. That means that the only thing I can add to this box are lines. And Shannon, the only thing she can add is shape. So already we started to create together. It looks like Shannon's shape um, is round, maybe the sun. I've tried to add mountains at the bottom. Gerardo is going to join us also. So you're starting to see that together we may be... Um, what's the word I'm looking for, restricted by the tool that we have, but it requires us to therefore what? Think outside the box. It requires us to find strategies to be able to communicate together to create. How can you leverage an activity like this across the curriculum? So this is the idea. And I want to thank the people who are participating. I will come back, so keep going. I'm gonna move along just because of the session time, but please keep going together. And I'm gonna loop back again, just like we did with the Jamboard slide, to see your beautiful creation. So yes, please um, continue to do that. There's some stars now, we have a sun. Uh, I added the mountains. And remember, you are restricted to the tool that you pick. As an educator in the classroom, you may choose to ask your students, you may choose to um, do that. You may choose to put them in breakout rooms in Google Meets and give each person a role in the breakout. Maybe the person who's leading that breakout is the one who facilitates which tool each member of that breakout is going to have to create in the Google Slides. So I picked Google Slides for this activity um, because I did want to have uh, lots of options for um, different tools that you could create. You could very easily also do this in Google Drawings and you can also do this in Jamboard. Um, Google Slides is brilliant. Why? Check this out. If I go to Gridview and let me know in the chat if you're a Gridview person, I don't know if people like Abbott or anybody else is on the session here are list view, but I'm definitely a Gridview person. And what's great about Gridview is that if I make this a little bit larger, check this out guys, I can watch my students working on the slides together. So obviously, since this is my trainer domain, you're all lovely anonymous uh, characters on the Google slide deck. However, I can see who's engaging in the lesson. So online engagement is a super big topic right now. Hey, Sethi, welcome all the way from um, somewhere in Asia. Also, I think Thailand. Uh, yeah, you're welcome. No problem. So yeah, uh, thank you for commenting on that, Sethi. Constraints, that's probably a better word than restrictions. Thank you for that. So working with constraints forces, pushes our boundaries pushes the barrier and okay how can we solve this so i know uh, sethi and a few others working in stem and steam and you know um robotics and all kinds of good things so you can start at an early age these types of activities directly in google slides right you can start this with 
early key stage one. You can start this with early years. So these are really cool things. And this starts the creative critical problem solving process in fun collaborative ways. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Okay. So check this out. There seems to be some like character forming on top of my mountain. I'm so excited. Okay. I'm going to ask you guys a favor because apps events may cut me off soon. And I'd love just to do one other activity. We can leave this Google slide deck open another hour or two after if you guys want to finish your lovely creation, and I'm happy to do so. But if you could please, I would love to invite you guys to slide 25. And this is an idea actually that I shared at my GEGMN a few months ago, but it was really popular. So I thought I'd bring it back just in case anybody hadn't seen it yet. Let's take a look at Google Drawings, another Googly way that we can create together. Um, so if you click on the Google Drawings, it's going to open up this. And what I'd like you to do is not in groups, but all together, I would love for you guys to create a creativity mascot. So based on all the learnings that we've done together, based on your suitcase of tools and creativity that you're bringing to today's session, I'd love you to do the same thing. Use your shapes, use your lines, use your colors, your fill buckets, and I would love to see a mascot. How can you all work together to create a mascot in Google Drawings? And remember, I've chosen the word mascot because it may resonate with us as something that is representative of something, right? Like I can think of when I was on a basketball team in high school and we had a mascot, right? So the idea here is, is that we can build a mascot for anything. It doesn't just have to be for teams and it, it could be for your groups. Maybe this is an activity you do at the start of the year to help people, um, your students and your learners work collaboratively together and connect. Maybe it's something different. So I'm going to leave the Google drawing board and I'm going to let you guys work at this. Oh, Shannon says she's listening to you. I didn't know that. Now I know. Um, so please guys think about creativity. What does it look like? See if you can come up with a collaborative uh, shape together. I'm going to come back to see how you guys are doing with that. And I'm just going to share with you for time where we are at here. So how can we mash up and there's so much more i'm just giving you guys little testers teasers sorry and tasters into creativity and some of the tools that i love to leverage in my creativity and education journey here on this slide what do we have we have adobe mac so if you click below you'll see an example of ben and jerry's ice cream who doesn't love ice cream okay maybe not everybody but many people like ice cream, so I chose that one. If you check that out, you can watch how they are leveraging ice cream in Adobe Max, so you can check that out. In the middle, does this look familiar to anybody? I think there's a small live delay, so I'm not going to wait because we're already over time, but this is applied digital skills. So if we take creative inspiration from Adobe Max, and we mash it up with a Google for Education Applied Digital Skills lesson. And then we use any of our Google apps. What do we do? We create and we help our students become 21st century members of society, whether that is in education, then going out into the big world, that's what happens. So this little image on the top right hand side there, this is the googly mascot that my uh, geg man team created a few months ago when we did this activity together on a geg man webinar so there are a few people i think actually shannon may have been involved in that one they worked together they used images shapes lines and they came together and that is our geg man googly mascot at the top right the bottom one here is a Google drawing uh, that is an infographic for a one word 2021 activity that we did through, I'm just going to see if I can see it there, a flyer, no, postcard. I think we did the postcard one or the vision board. I can't remember. It's one of those two applied digital skills lesson. And then this is something that one of my students created in a Google drawing. That was their word was hope for 2021. Super lovely. So this is an idea of what happens when you ignite creativity and you have awesome tools and resources like Google for education and you have the applications and the means and you have space and time and all the other things we talked about these are the things that you can get so i'm just going to go we're almost done now veronica just give me another minute or two 
You may have seen these images before. I always bring them back because they inspire me on the daily. One of my year nine students, uh, we were doing a creativity jam and we spanned the word anime on the wheel of choices. And they drew, they sketched this anime character by hand on the left hand side. And then what happened then they, I challenged them, can you recreate your sketch in a digital tool? So then he went and recreated the sketch in Google Drawings. How cool is that, right? This uh, student over here chose Adobe InDesign. Never in a million years would I have thought they would have chosen InDesign. You could definitely do that in Fresco or Photoshop, et cetera, but InDesign, wow. Absolutely amazing for your nine students. Um, for those educators out there like myself who are not as talented as these learners who are in year nine, this is a little bit of my work. As you can see there, my, peep, my person looks more like a little cartoon character. Um, and this is a little bit about my journey. So this is like a uh, book study sketch note that I did from a live Twitter um, chat that we did with Bookcamp PD. So shout out to Meredith Johnson and also the author of Strive, uh, Strive for Happiness and Education, um, Robert Dunlop. And then this is a sketch note class that I was started to take with um, Jennifer Giffen. I hope I get these names correct. Correct. Um, and so this is one of the sketches. That was my first class sketch note that I did at the top right. And then this is one of my first sketch notes that I did live on Behance um, to explore different brushes in Adobe Fresco. And I just wanted to let you guys know I do these sessions every Friday. I took a short break the last couple of weeks, but I do them every Friday morning in my time zone. And I just try and I just sketch free flow and we're learning together on air with everybody. And I want to say this has really helped in the classroom when you empower your learners also to take risks when you as an educator put yourself out there on the line and learn with your students at the same time trust me the magic will happen the relationship the trust and the relationship building that will happen is just tenfold all right we don't really have time i think they're going to kick me off soon anyway if you want to see the four challenge um idea guys this is in a geg man session no sorry geg apac uh i did a session on the four icon challenge so if you're interested in that let me know in the chat and i'll drop the link to the youtube channel um it's a whole idea basically that the power of icons basically tells a story so can you guess what this these icons which story it represents and you can have your students again take guesses in the chat on the right hand side and when you're done you can magically and i say magically if you have any guesses drop them in the youtube chat uh, or on the slide deck it's totally up to you um you can do a reveal of what the uh, story is. Here is a box that has transparent lines, but is the same color as the background. So if I pull that down, it's going to reveal the answer as to what the story is. So this is another example. You can easily ask your students, you can make it over a unit, you can make it over a week, you can actually do it in one lesson. You can give them a Google drawing, or you can give them a Jamboard, and you can give them space to design an icon and this is called icon boarding so you're basically having them create a digital story using icons um, so yeah if I move this box away if you guys have guessed it is Harry Potter so super super cool the icons that you see on the screen were actually designed by an Adobe education leader uh, last year at the BET conference um, in Adobe Illustrator but again you can absolutely use the googly tools that we have to do that in Google drawing as well or Jamboard or right here in Google slides okay so the last couple of slides, guys, are just resources. So I'm gonna let you go through them on your own. Coloring books is a really popular one. I just reshared it on Twitter this week, actually, and a lot of people commented saying they didn't know it was there. So Adobe, uh, there are people at Adobe that have designed coloring books, and you can download it for free. So if you click on this coloring book page, it's going to take you here where you have a coloring book. But what's great is when this was first released last year, I introduced it to my students. Um, I, I challenged them. I said, hey, look what the professionals are designing. 
Does it inspire you to create something? What could we create for our uh, students that are in lower primary schools? And so um, you can download this here. There's a link up here to download the PDF version. You can color it in, you can share it with your students. But what this does, it inspires me to do the same thing. You can create coloring uh, pages and it can be, instead of having like a yearbook at the end of the year where you have photographs, still do that. Obviously those are super fun, but why not do something creative like this? Everybody has a page to design that's a coloring in page and you give at the end of the year to all the students, the designs that everybody's created as a class together. So just some powerful creative ideas to keep in mind um, to inspire you guys. Um, there's also some great links in there. Uh, Meredith um, Akers, uh, shout out to her, just shared a couple days ago this blog. Um, take a look at this, guys. There's some great ideas in there for Jamboard, Scratch and Reveal. So if you click on that, um, also there's a memory board. I think I'm talking fast because I know my time is up, but hopefully it gives you a little bit of a sneak peek. So click on these links to get those resources. This one is amazing. I read this just yesterday. It is brilliant. So you can, because the color um, layer in Jamboard always remains on the top, you can use the color to like hide things underneath like a sticky note or another shape and you can scratch it to reveal using the eraser tool. So super, super powerful, really, really amazing. Mystery reveals, etc. So take a look at that resource. Um, also, there's 21 um, hacks for Google Classroom. So shout out to James Sawyer, who actually shared that on Twitter. And I grabbed that this morning. And I said, oh, I'm going to add that to my deck. Shout out to Ditch That Textbook. There's also some resources for Google Drawings in there. There's the link to the creativity course. And I've given you a free copy to a Jamboard template that I created to celebrate all of the educators at my school as they achieve their certification uh, for Google certified educator level one and two because we are working our way to become a Google reference school. So if you're interested, grab a copy of that and you can also use it within your own community to celebrate your learners. That is it for me. So while Veronica is hopping back on the call, I would love to connect with all of you guys on social media. I have a sharing is caring challenge for you. Take anything that you've taken away today. Try it out in class with your students or your teachers. If you're a coach, please tag um, everybody. Google for EDU, Apps Events, Acer for Education, Adobe EDU Creative. Tag everybody. Share the creativity love. We want to connect with you. And I just want to say thank you so much to everybody who has joined the session today. If you hung in there with me, I actually took an hour or so. They may not invite me back here again, uh, but <laughs> hopefully you've had some great takeaways. <laughs> Georgina, it was amazing. Thank you so much for your effort, for your time. It was awesome. And you could see lovely comments from everyone that it was really exciting and useful for people. That's great. Thank you and so much for Georgina, having me. I promise you will be invited for the next time. <laughs> oh, okay, good. <laughs> I love sharing in this community. It's so much fun. Thank you so much for your hospitality. It's so great to meet you. Also, I think it's our first time to do apps events together, uh, finally at the same time. So it's really nice, yeah, to connect. And um, and I can't wait to be back again. So if anybody needs any of those resources, um, we, the, the link will stay with the recording. And so um, you guys are happy to take a copy of that. And I, I'd love to hear how everybody's using any of those creative ideas with their community. So yeah. Thank you so much, Georgina. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I would like to say also, uh, I would like to say also thank you to uh, our great speakers. So Jane, Lena, and Georgina. I think it was awesome team, Women's Day, really. And not only awesome, but also pretty as well. <laughs> so thank you so much. I would like to say thank you also to Acer, our great partner. Uh, we are able to run these summits for free just thanks to our great cooperation. Uh, I would like to mention that our next education uh, free summit, it's going to be on February 16th. So feel free to join us again. And also, uh, if you want to uh, try a uh, one month trial, a Google G Suite Enterprise for Education, feel free to submit or send them an email or send email to Dan Taylor. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure for us. 
to run this summit. Thank you and have a lovely day. Bye.